This week we're in Norwich holding the hands of some very cautious first time buyers. 12 months of searching and they're no closer to owning their first home. Let's hope their bad luck isn't catching. They love this house. Can't we just run now? Do we have to be the ones that tell them this? This week we've got a right pair on our hands. They just can't clear the buyer's biggest hurdle, the survey. Yep, they've loved and lost the home of their dreams three times because they haven't got the knowledge, know-how or now. So we're here to put them on the right track. Helen Rackham and Paul Beckett love their Norwich City lifestyle with bars and restaurants on their doorstep and friends are plenty. This is where these 20-somethings want to be. They can't bear to be apart, and even at work, they're only a floor away from each other. Both in insurance, Helen works in marketing and Paul in IT. And they rent a house only 15 minutes walk from the city centre. They live together, work together and party together. But what they can't seem to do together is buy a house. We started looking for a house about a year ago. First time buyers, we thought, oh yeah, we've got no chain, we're renting, everything's yeah. ready to go. And it's just not been like that at all, it's just been complete nightmare from start to finish, unfortunately. We know the problem for these two hasn't been finding a home. In fact, they've put offers in on three houses, but each time they've been scared off by some serious sounding surveys and pulled out. We are so desperate for a house. I think we'd feel if we put an offer in on anything, just be waiting for the phone call to say, yeah, you've got another problem with it. Even our mortgage advisor uses yeah. us as an example of exactly. how bad things can get. Yeah. You probably think you've hit rock bottom when you become a mortgage advisor's anecdote, but they're not alone. Thousands of buyers get scared off by the survey and pull out of a purchase prematurely. I trained as a surveyor and I've been evaluating properties for about 12 years now. I've yet to come across a problem that's completely insurmountable. You've got to remember that a surveyor's job is to identify anything that's wrong with the property. What you've got to do is work out what's serious and what's not. And we can't afford to take any chances with this cautious couple. Houses in Norwich are flying off the market and with a working brief I need to get straight on the case. They've got a budget of £165,000 and want a three-bedroom period property no more than 20 minutes walk from Norwich city centre. Well, that's gone as well. You must have something you can tell me. While Phil pans the pavement, I'm off to get the finer details from Helen and Paul. They think they need a three-bedroomed house, but with only two of them living there, I'm not sure why. Their two-bed rented plaid is plenty big enough. Well, it was until they filled up one of the rooms with junk. But they want a house of their own, and a year of disappointments has left them at a low ebb. Paul, all this to and fro the disappointment, the losing of the three properties, how does that make you feel about the process? Uh, well, really deflated, to be honest. Initially, with the first place, it was very um, exciting to find a place and sort of imagine yourself sitting around, how you'd have it laid out and that sort of thing, but one after the other, it's just sort of taking all the excitement away from the whole process completely. So what we've got to do is put the magic back into the search. Oh, definitely. But what about his better half? Time for a girls' chat. So you longing for your own house? Yeah, really badly. And we're just so desperate, we just want to start decorating and showing off our house. Yep. And every time we go to do that, it goes wrong. <laughs> so. OK, well, I promised Paul that we would put the magic back into the search. Good. And I think for you, I think I can guarantee that we can find you a home to call your own. Don't make any rash promises, Kirsty. You may be confident, but I'm worried. I've got a client with a th requirement for three-bedroom house. Budget's about 165. You're going to struggle to get three beds off landing. What would you have to pay for a three-bed? You're looking at least 170, um, up, anything up to 180, and the good ones can go for even more. Have you got any two <clears> bedrooms left? There isn't really any sort on the books now. We'd like to say they're selling at hot cakes, the two beds. Okay, I'll be back in touch. Okay, thanks for no your problem. help. Cheers. Thanks. Well, at least someone's happy. I think it's best if you show Helen and Paul our first property while I continue searching. Right, first up, a tidy little terrace, only a few streets from where they currently live in East Norwich. 20 minutes walk into town and staggering distance from the bars. But first things first, these two are paranoid about surveys and a quick lesson in what to look for should reassure them that there's nothing to be scared of. What can you see up there? Uh, a chimney? 
Chimney seems to be okay, no obvious cracks. Yeah. 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 The flashing, the lead on the side, looks in good condition. Got a um, loft conversion next door. Is next it door, you've got a loft conversion. Likely You're dead right, same. Paul. So what you know is that planning consent is not going to be difficult. So in terms of a survey, there's a lot that you can tell from standing on the street yeah. before you've Just even been inside glance, the house. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Should we get in there? Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's go for it. This two-bed terrace has a certain charm, and space-wise, it's pretty similar to their rented pad. Maybe cluttered, but it's got character, and at nearly 30,000 under budget, surely it'll sing to them. Now, what we've got here is a big dining area. Positive, negative? It's a nice size room, definitely. It's just it's a, I need to well, imagine it, it without all the stuff in it. Now, straight into the master bedroom here. I think the room it is big, but again, it just has got to imagine it's all out. It's. 137,500. Oh, you said 137,950, didn't you? Oh, Paul, you <laughs> still, wow. If you were able to price it that accurately, that's really good. It means you know what you're talking about. They know what they're talking about, but do they know what they want? With a bit of decluttering, this house could really work for them. It just doesn't feel right. I think downstairs is quite nice. It's upstairs, I'm not keen on. Now, verdict. It's not right. So we just feel it's very cramped, and even without their stuff in it, it does feel very small. Right, onwards and upwards. Well, at least I've injected a bit of enthusiasm back into their house hunting. They may be big on enthusiasm, but I'm short of three-bedroom houses. Thank you very much. Cheers. At last, I've got a lead which sounds pretty promising. OK, while you follow them up, we'll head off to our next property. Sadly, it's still only a two-bed, but it's really spacious and it's in a great spot, west of the city centre and only 15 minutes walk to work. How does it strike you from the outside? Um, yeah, it needs some work doing in the front, but yeah. I, I really like the um, Windows, style of the outside. Windows need a paint. It's got a bit of character. Nice. Nice. The outside gets the thumbs up, but it's inside that really sells this house. Not only does it have two big bedrooms, but they've made fantastic use of the available space downstairs and created somewhere really stylish. And it's seven grand under budget. What they've done is something that's quite clever. They've used the side return of the house, often a wasted space, oh for a kitchen. Wow. I, I love it. I just Great. absolutely love it. It works very well. It's a yeah, clever it use of space. It's so unusual. I've got to be honest with you, it has only got two bedrooms. We're still looking at the two bedroom properties okay. to stay within your budget. In the last house, the upstairs space was an issue, but the bedrooms here are far bigger. Better? Yeah, loads better. Oh, More spacious? Yeah, definitely. Put your head through there. This is nice, isn't it? Quality. Yeah, it's lovely. I really like it. Double thumbs up on the kitchen, everything downstairs. Great use of the space. And it's good value for money. Okay. The area as well. Yeah, just fingers crossed there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> they seem to be very reassured by my advice, which is great in one way, but puts a lot of responsibility on my shoulders. I'll be glad when Phil gets here tomorrow because we have got to convince them that they shouldn't be so cautious about surveys. But if we're wrong, we can have so much egg on our face, we'll be scrambled. Next morning, and Phil wants to touch base at our third property. It's the one I found in West Norwich, an area we know they love, and the walk to work, well, 20 minutes door to door. You know, Phil, I must be mellowing in my old age. You're not old, darling. <laughs> no, seriously, because previously, I'd have got hold of those two and shucken them up and said, right, you buy something which needs value you adding. Didn't. And you left them no, alone. No, I All was day. sympathetic about their survey issue. Yeah. I didn't accuse them of being wet. And we went to see two great houses, one of which they really liked. And I did a lot of nice, comforting hand-holding. Mm. Well, you're going to need a bit of hand-holding here. This is the only three bed that I found within budget. I know, and it needs loads of work. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to be scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> you're not mellowing at all, are you? Morning, guys. Good morning. Hello. Hello. This is Phil. He's come along Hello. the ride. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet Hello. you. With Kirsty allegedly on her best behaviour, let's hope we can make them see that this house could work. With a bit of hard graft, they'd kill two birds with one stone. They'd get their three bedrooms and the opportunity to add value. 
It's on at £157,950. Now, Helen, through here, you've got your dining room. Lovely original fireplace. Nice fireplace. Yeah. Oh, tell me what you're thinking. Look at your no, little it's face. Just, no, it's, fine. it's just a bit... It's obviously different to yesterday, so I'm just adjusting and imagining... Is. It is. Like if I had my stuff in it and I painted it and got rid of yeah. the filth. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not that bad. You should see some of the stuff Phil and I see. Now, this is the biggest bedroom, Paul. In fact, oh, I think... Wow. It's probably the biggest bedroom on the street. Yeah, it is massive. Uh, and the reason for that is because... This area here is above the passageway. Oh, yeah, I saw that from outside, actually. Got to be a bonus. Huge yes. second bedroom. There's a loo and a shower en suite. Great. But in here is the third bedroom. This is where you could put bathroom, you could put dressing room. Yeah, I really like the size of it, actually. I really like the idea of just sort of having a play and making it use of the space and that sort of thing. I'm really positive about this one. Great. I'm not sure what Helen think, but well... Yeah, well, that we'll might, find be, that might be the stumbling block there. Yeah, oh. indeed. So Paul's interested in adding value. Good man, but I'm not so sure about Helen. I think she's after the finished product. For what it's on for, it's on for quite a lot. And I, I just don't think we've got the time to sort of take it on. That's so I wouldn't mind, it. but... I think you want someone you just want to move into and live in, don't you? I'm not keen on it, but if you want to have a think about it. Chairs were a good idea, weren't they? Yeah, you look very comfortable. Well, we visit so many back, vacant properties. Enjoying yourselves, leaving it all up to me to do the work, <laughs> ring the agents. I am not leaving it all to you. Anything else? Can I get your lunch? <laughs> Does yours say slave on the back? <laughs> Mine says master. They're not going to go for this house. You do know that, don't you? How did it go yesterday? I mean, who's going to make this decision? Is it a joint decision or is it Helen's decision? It's Helen's decision. Definitely. It's always the way. I'm going to have to have a word with Paul. <laughs> Beef him up a bit. It's not fair on you, so we'll no, have no. a look. We'll have a chat about it. I think we'll... Um... Never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair Thank enough. You. I'll just go off and cry in a corner now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've given it our best shot. Three bedrooms within budget. But Helen's the boss and she's oh, knocked yeah. it on the head. Coming up, we may have found Helen's perfect house. It's everything we've ever wanted, isn't it? Or have we? Oh, Helen, don't! Oh, it's going to be OK. Oh, come it's going to be fine. Helen and Paul are desperate to buy their first love nest together. But when faced with a survey, they've panicked. Not once, but three times, and scampered back to their rented pad. As first-time buyers, they're fragile and a little bit frightened. We're here to hold their hands. We're in Norwich, and they've rejected two properties. Paul's up for doing work and adding value, but Helen's having none of it. And she's after the finished product. Mind you, with one in the running, we're not in bad shape. Really, really like really, it. Yeah. Really like it. But we can raise the bar. If doing up houses isn't going to float Helen's boat, then we've got the best finished house on the market. It's in the city centre and came on yesterday at 159,950. Five grand under their budget. And we're the first through the door. Ah. Oh. Oh. This is great. This is lovely. It's really finished and nice. Oh, God. Just the way you like it. Just the way I like it. Yeah. <laughs> All done. All done. You are a predictor bunny, aren't you? Yeah, but how much is it? Because this is really close to work, really close to the city. It came on the market yesterday at 159,950. But there is a flood of people who want to get in yeah, and see it. Yeah, we are holding them off with a big stick. It's a good price. Very good price. Yeah, I think it is. You actually. haven't seen around the house yet. You've just walked in and thought, <laughs> yeah. oh, no, it's really funny. No, but I just thought it was going to be a fortune from the outside and because of where it is. The owner has created a fantastic home. Two big reception rooms, a stylish kitchen, two double bedrooms, and I've got a little surprise that's going to enchant Helen. I don't know whether you'll go for this kind of walk-in closet arrangement. Oh, no, you are kidding. <laughs> yes, I'm kidding. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> That's just so cool. Wow. This is just to be my dream area. This is exactly what I wanted in a house. At the last house, Paul was eager to add value. But for a man afraid of surveys, has he got the bottle? This is a joint decision. You've both got to be happy. And if your drive and your motivation is to, you know, climb up the ladder, make some money, then we need to hear about that. Yeah, that's definitely where I'm coming from. Then this is the wrong house. Yeah, I think it is. Paul seems to think that you and he could do this in a house, that you could spend £20,000 and make it your own. And 
Add the value yourself. No way, he's just dreaming. We like just enjoying our life and we're not in the mood So to... what makes Paul think that he's capable of, of this type of project? Testosterone, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a little something in the garden that'll keep Paul sweet. Come and have a look at this. It's, it's currently being used as a beautician's um, oh, right. room. Goes right through. Oh, back here as well. Blimey. Could be a boys' room. Could set your decks up there. Yeah. Get away from Helen. Make plenty of noise. That look, that's really good. I really like that. Well, no need to ask you <laughs> too much about what you like about <laughs> that because it's written all over your faces. It's just. Yeah, it's really unbelievable. amazing. It's everything we've ever wanted, isn't it? Everything is new and nice and clean and lovely, and I well, want it. it. There's not a lot you can add to it, but. It's great anyway, I love, I love that every part of it. I think you'll get over it though, won't you? Yeah. The shed. I don't think you're going to give him a moment's choice. <laughs> yeah. I think you'll get over it, won't you? <laughs> but it is important in, in, in any house search, you don't get too emotionally involved. It's not yours to you actually it's a little late. I'll probably cry. Well, <laughs> you've been down this road before. You have been down this road before. It's not a... Two or three times. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I know. Oh dear me, we're going to have to hold her down with some string, I think. String? More like heavy-duty cable. They think it's their dream house, but what about that third bedroom? And with their history of bad luck with surveys, we need to keep their options open. At last, my hard work has paid off. I found a fabulous three-bedroom house in West Norwich, 15 minutes' walk into the city centre. The only downside is the price. At 175, it's 10,000 over budget. I'm not sure the extra room is worth the money, but will they? The last right. thing that Kirsty and I want to do is stretch your budget, but no. this is kind of what you asked us to find. Yeah, yeah no, no, that's no, no, fair no, enough. Looks, we, yeah. looks promising from the outside. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Inside is lovely. It was renovated two years ago, so all the work has been done, which will keep Helen happy. In fact, it's everything they've asked us to find. But will it wow them? Do you yeah. get that same feeling you got in the last house? No. Well, no feeling at all? I'm quite loyal. To the last house? Yeah, I feel like I'm cheating on it if I compliment this one too much. Why don't you go upstairs and cheat on Paul with Phil and I'll take Paul. Come on, Paul. <laughs> we better go upstairs. Oh, are you running away from me? <laughs> I'm left on my own. I thought my luck was in. Despite Phil's best efforts, Helen's heart really does belong to the last house. But does Paul feel the pull? So, seeing this house confirms your feelings about the previous one. Definitely. Comparing the prices, I'm not really sure. I would I would pay the extra for the third bedroom when, like I say, we've got the shed at the other place, which yeah. will handle our storage needs. Yeah. So Paul doesn't think the third bedroom is worth the extra cash. Will Helen? This is the third bedroom. Right. Which is small. Yeah, it is very small. <laughs> but bear in mind, this is actually what you asked us to find. This is the three bedroom Oh house. yeah, that's fair enough. Um, and I think I'd rather stick with the two generous size bedrooms. Good call. That's all you need. This is a nice house, but it's not for them. Um, I'm worried because we've got to make sure that there is nothing wrong with that house tomorrow. No, I don't think that's right. There's something wrong with every house. What we have to do is educate them that no house is perfect. Next morning, we return to the city centre house that Helen's got her heart set on. We may be first through the door, but with a bottleneck of viewings, we need to work hard to get it before anyone else crosses the threshold. I've spotted a potentially serious problem with the house that would go beyond minor survey quibbles. They've had more than their fair share of survey scares, and we've got to make absolutely sure this one's going to pass, so I'm getting a second opinion. I've arranged to meet a surveyor here to have a bit of a cast around the structure. Oh, great. So oh excellent. You, you go on in. Let's hope it's not depressing. <laughs> well, cross your fingers. Helen and Paul need to have a good scout around and make a list of what fixtures and fittings they'd like to be included in their offer. Oh, it still looks nice. Yeah, I do like that wall. Yeah, you want to make a note of that blind. Do you still like it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I hope it's going OK with that surveyor. I really do, because it's going to break their hearts if there's a problem with this house. Unfortunately, it's not looking good. There's a big crack in the gable end, which could be a major problem. 
It may be that um, previous owners have uh, information from engineers, or it may be that there's been insurance claims. That, that sort of paperwork would be helpful. Hi. That's not happy face. No, it's not happy news either. There's been structural movement down the side wall. All oh, houses of this age move a bit. Most of this terrace is actually moved when I've looked up and down the front. This well, is not what we needed for this couple. Potentially, it's quite a serious issue. Try and stay calm. I just want to get excited, but every time I get excited, I just keep thinking, oh, it's all going to go wrong. It'll be a miracle if this is all right, because it's too perfect at the minute. They love this house. Can't we just run now? Do we have to be the ones that tell them this? This could be the fourth time. <laughs> no, 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 don't say that, no. Hello. Hi, Hi there. Um, we've I've got, got something, something we need to show you. Okay. All right. It's Come not. It's not. It's not a big worry. It's a little concern, uh, and it's th something we think we can overcome. The vendors have lived here for six years, right? And they had it surveyed when they bought it, and just before they bought it, there'd been some movement in the house. The bricks from here had been taken out of these new ones. You can see the new bricks. Oh yeah, you can yeah. see the, the line going up. Okay. My worry is that within the last six years there's been additional movement. You see how that brick has cracked straight through the middle? Yeah. yeah. That's not a good sign. What we need to establish is who the existing insurance company are okay. and whether they would be happy to continue cover. Okay. Right, okay. If it's not insurable, it's not mortgageable. Oh, oh Helen, don't! don't. It, it's gonna be okay. okay don't it's worry. gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Don't cry. I still wanna go ahead on it though. Yeah, yeah I do, I definitely. Yeah. It's a setback, but nothing is insurmountable, and we're determined to make this house work for them. We need to gather together any paperwork related to the crack and get guarantees from their mortgage company that they'll insure it. I've spoken to the vendor and I've got some paperwork from when they bought the property and going back, actually going back 14 or 15 years, it's been insured by actually the place where you work oh, right, since yeah. then, and they've been happy to continue cover. Oh, the whole way that's, through. Good news. that's a huge relief, but our job's not done. Now we need to focus on securing the property. Let's talk about the money. It's on the market at 159950. 159 feels expensive, but it, it also feels that someone's going to pay for pay it within the not too distant future. I don't know what you're saying, it does feel a little expensive, but for the, the quality of the fitting the fixtures inside, I think I think we'd happily pay that. No, to be honest, I'd rather go in at asking price and then get a load of stuff thrown in. I do have an offer for you. It would most definitely require complete exclusivity. So it is, it is strictly under those terms that they will pay the asking price. Thank you very much. We can't, we can't say further than that. They've offered the price, yeah. we've given it to them. Sadly, we couldn't get an immediate answer, but the agent promises to call in the morning. Hi, Phil, how are you? Have you had a sleepless night? Yes, we're getting quite stressed out at the moment. <laughs> It's yours. Property's off the market. They've accepted the offer. Oh, wow. <laughs> super. Oh, that's great. What a great result. We couldn't be happier for them. Next week, we're in the Welsh borders. Mel wants land and life in the hills, but what about partner Ali? But what's in it for her? Him. Just that? Interested in taking part in the next series of Relocation Relocation? Then go to www.channel4.com forward slash take part.